Hey everyone, this is Wilson from Apex Medical. This is our second video on how to perform spirometry using the Medico spirometry software. In our previous video, we covered how to sign into the software and how to perform a calibration check. So in this video, we'll go through how to enter patient details, uh, patient demographics, etc., and also how to perform spirometry itself. So when we want to start testing, we always want to start in our left window, our Medicro Persons and Studies window. And the button I always recommend my clients to press if they want to proceed to the next step is always this bottom left button here. Once again, if you do forget what any of these buttons do, hover your mouse over it and it will tell you. So here it says new person. So this is where I start a new test. So I'll click on that once and it's going to bring up some fields. Now, your fields or your software will look quite similar to mine if I've set it up. Uh, you can see here that there's some red fields at the top and a white field at the bottom. So the red fields are absolutely compulsory and the white fields are optional. So we'll fill this out. So person code, Normally, I recommend that my clients input an NHI or a MedTech number, for example. So I'll just put in a fake one here. And we'll be Donald Duck today. We can proceed to the next step. So once again, we have to click the button at the, the button at the bottom left, which has a little plus next to it where it says "New Study." I'll click on that, and a pop-up will come up saying "Changes need to be saved before proceeding to new study." And of course, we want to save this because we've just inputted these details. So we hit yes, and this will take us to our next window. This is the final window before we can start performing spirometry. Once again, there are red fields and white fields. So red is compulsory, white is optional for you to fill out. And there's also, as you'll notice, there's four gray fields here. So the gray fields are automatically populated uh, by the software after we've performed spirometry. It's sort of like an automatic diagnosis uh, sort of thing. So we'll put in our red fields, our compulsory fields first. So I'll put in my height. Oops, I'm not that tall. And my weight. And also very important to pick a prediction model. And the prediction model you want to pick is the one which relates most to the patient. Always ask the patient uh, regarding their ethnicity. So I'll click on my one here. And these white fields you can choose to fill out or not. For example, you may want to check if a patient's taken any inhalers within the last 24 hours. So you can take, uh, make note of that. For example, I'll put in last hook, salbutamol 48 hours ago, etc. Once we've put in all our details, we're ready to get started. So once again, always press the button at the bottom left, uh, proceed to measurements and results. I'll click that once. Give it a second and it's going to pull all of those uh, demographics that we just entered over onto the right screen and we're ready to start testing. So to start testing, uh, we always want to start at the bottom of the screen here. So the button I always recommend my clients to press is this button here, this flow volume loop. It says FVC plus FIVC. So you would click that to start the blow and then you would click the stop button here to stop the blow. So remember, always instruct uh, your patients before performing spirometry, just so they have an idea of what they have to do. Normally, I would recommend the patient to start with their lips nice and sealed on the mouthpiece, tidal breathing, and after two or three breaths, I'll ask the patient to take a big breath in as much as they can before blasting that air out as fast as they can for as far as they can. So I'll do one now. I'm just going to move the microphone so I don't deafen you guys.
All right. So after we've performed our blow, it will ask us if we want to accept our measurement. And in our case, yes, because that was a good blow. And that's one trial. You can see at the bottom of the screen here next to pre, uh, there's one blue square that slid up. And as you do more trials, all of these squares will light up. Uh, of course, for spirometry, a uh, minimum of three blows, of which two need to be acceptable and repeatable according to the ATS ERS criteria. So we'll just do one more of those. So once again, to start the test, we want to press on this flow volume loop. And when we're done, we're going to press stop. Alrighty, once again, we've hit stop. Do you want to accept this measurement? Yes. All right. We'll do one last one. Alrighty, so we'll click yes. So if we want to see all of our flow volume loops overlapped on top of each other, we will click this button here that says show curves at the top. So all the buttons at the top are to sort of review all of our results and it's what we want to click on after we perform the testing. Whereas the buttons at the bottom here uh, the buttons we need to press when we want to perform testing. So you can see here that my loops are more or less uh, overlap on top of each other, which is great. And we're just going to quickly review our results here. So if we click on this button here that says show measurement results, it will show our results. So you can see here there's trial one, trial two, and trial three. And we can, uh, here we can have a look at how acceptable and repeatable our values are. So my FEV1 in my first trial was 4.13, in my second trial was 3.95, and in my third trial was 4.02. Uh, my FVC in my first trial was 5.66, second trial was 5.44, and 5.55. So we can see here that my FEV1 is repeatable because my two highest values in trial one and trial three, um, 4.13 liters and 4.02 liters, that's uh, 0 0.11 or 110 mils difference, uh, which is within the 150 mil difference for the ATS ERS criteria. But you can see here that my FVC are um, two highest values, 5.66 and 5.50. That's 160 mils of, so that's not quite acceptable. So at this point, you would probably instruct the patient to do one or two more blows just to try get nice, acceptable and repeatable values. And that's it. And our next uh, video will cover how to do a report.